akuna matata akuna matatizo akuna matata si akupeleza akuna matata Everyone has that bucket list, a set of activities you've always wanted to do, whether it be facing your fears, going on a wild adventure, or just traveling solo. For me, I decided to visit 10 new countries this year to take adventures off my bucket list. Zanzibar has always been that bucket list destination for me, but for some reason, I have always postponed my visit here because of my fear for water-related activities, being that it is the blue water capital of Africa. I spent six months learning and practicing how to swim to survive on water, after which I decided to book a flight to this island nation. Join me on this adventure as I travel Zanzibar, taking off adventures from my bucket list while I show you how to travel this beautiful destination called Zanzibar. Let's go! if you subscribe to the channel and please give this video a like before we proceed with the video i made a travel guide to make it easy for you to visit and tour zanzibar this pdf would serve as a guide all through your stay in zanzibar showing you the visa process both affordable and luxury resort a list of activities we did and where you can book them the best part of zanzibar to stay in and basically all the requirements needed so you don't have to pay hundreds of dollars hiring a local tour company to download the travel guide look at the description section of this video the first 20 persons would get it for free thank you so much for supporting the channel by downloading the travel guide. The first item on my bucket list is to visit the popular Nakupenda Island. Leave a signature that I still even visit there by taking a photo on the extreme end of the sandbank. So it's like a beach in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. And uh, like uh, the beach in Stone Town is not as dreamy as the ones on other parts of the islands, which means uh, the something like really nice that you can get from here, which is maybe 20 minutes away, yeah. is getting a boat to Nakupenda. On getting here, you'd first need to hire a locally made boat. Embarking on this boat is another exciting experience of its own. The journey can last up to 25 minutes to get here. The closer you get, the water gets crystal clear and transparent. We consider it as the best beach from Stone Town. I can, I can see the island right here. Maybe in another like what? Seven, seven minutes we're going to get there. It's always nice when you are the only one there, but let's see who we see on there. Yes! This has got to be it. So we are at uh, Makupenda, it's like a, an island inside the island, inside the island. It's like a, a piece of land in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. When the tides are completely high and sometimes in the month, this is completely covered. Wow. So, wow. Uh, and when the tides are low, then you have this uh, beautiful sandbank and a beach here, which uh, people can come and enjoy. And sometimes they come here, they make food, some people come here just to relax. There is uh, a reef just close to here where people could snorkel. Yeah. So uh, it just depends. Sometimes people have weddings. They would come here for that. They would come here for sunsets. All right. You can come here for basically anything that you want. Uh, <laughs> like if you want anything like around the beach area, you can come here for that. I'm about to launch the drone, take a very nice photo to tick off an item on my bucket list. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> bucket list check. Yes! Nakupenda in English means I love you. It is undeniably a magical place with one of the world's most gorgeous sandbanks that appears during low tides. This is, uh, I would say, the best beach option from Stone Town. Yeah. The closest one. And uh, therefore, people just grab a boat, 20 minutes, they're here. Swimming with sea turtles in Zanzibar is a magical experience that allows you to get up close and personal with these giant creatures. The next item on my bucket list is to swim with the sea turtles. You have seen all these uh, photos online of people taking photos with the turtles. I saw the photos on Instagram and I definitely wanted to try it myself. There are several locations in Zanzibar where you can spot the sea turtles, but when it comes to swimming with them, there's only one place called the Baraka National Aquarium in Nyungu Beach. 
but because I wanted to learn about these beautiful creatures as well, I opted in for the Marani yeah. Aquarium. Okay. I just came out this is Marani Natural Aquarium. Our organization is to prevent the turtles to increase the number of the sea turtles because we normally get all the sea turtles from the fishermen which catch them by mistakes so sometimes they get injured so they are here for treatment when they recover we take them back to the ocean this is the baby sea turtles when they are babies they used to eat small fish but when they reach one year they change they become mm. vegetarian our lagoon is natural the water inside here is direct from the ocean this is salt water. Also, we put fish inside here to balance ecosystem. Also, if you'll be interested to go swim. Of course, you know I'm interested to <laughs> go swim, guys. Come on! A few moments later. Something is tickling me. Oh, oh my god! Swim that side backwards. <laughs> I need help! <laughs> Solos are known for their curious and playful nature and they often would approach swimmers to say hello. So if you're going to do this, you have to get ready for some, you know, tickling from the turtles. It was weird for me because they kept, you know, just touching and tickling me. I couldn't help but scream. Fuckerless Jack! Swimming with the turtle! Now let me get out of here! I mean, when I see these things online, it look cute, but it's not cute. <laughs> it's scary because, you know, they're like all over your body, like they're talking you and they're like some come to your boss and your wee wee and stuff like that. I'm just like, yo, leave me alone. <laughs> they didn't bite me, but it was just like tickling, tickling, tickling on my hands, but it didn't it didn't bite me, but bucket list check, let's go! Yes! This is going to be the first time ever I am trying this. The third item on my bucket list is to go snorkeling and see the magical underworld creatures. Alright, let's get it! We're ready to go, we're ready to tick this bucket list, my friend. First was finding a suitable location for this. There are several designated locations in and around Zanzibar where you can go snorkeling. But Menemba Island is the most popular for several reasons. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of the beautiful islands in, in, in Zanzibar. It's nice for fishes, we see a lot of fish here. Different type of fish, most of our aquarium fishes. I was also told we can spot dolphins on our way. Are you sure we're going to see dolphins? We have like 70% uh, chance to see some So dolphins. in the morning did you see dolphins? Yes, I we saw, saw dolphins. dolphins. A lot oh of them. God. Sadly, we weren't able to find any, majorly because of the time of the day we visited. So make sure you go for this adventure as early as possible. So I hopped on a boat to go face my fears and take this item off my bucket list. There's a mouse piece here, mm -hmm. in which you have to bite this one. You have to bite it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Water comes in, but not very often. When the water comes in, you have to blow harder. Like... Yeah. Okay, then the water will go automatically, it will, will, will not be on the pipe. Don't use your nose. If you use your nose, you get fog. Like... You yeah. see? All these boats you see here, they have to pay a marine fee to come to this island because it's it's uh it's private now i was also told that and beyond has like uh, a collaboration with the government to own this island for about 60 years you know it's really beautiful the water here is crystal clear a lot of people come here it's called menemba island i love it I hope so right now i'm about to go snorkeling let's go see what's in the underwater all right i'm about to go in i'm about to go in let's go let's go let's go Oh my god, I can't believe I am in a 30 meters deep water. Bucket list checked. Yes! Yo guys, it's crazy, I mean, a couple of months ago I could just kind of 
a, a pool, and now I am I'm in the ocean, guys. That's crazy, guys. You gotta try this. To this side of town, guys, you probably you have to check this out. 100%. If you're in Zanzibar, you should try this out. Check out the travel guide to see where and how you can book this adventure for yourself. The next item on my bucket list is to dine in the most expensive and iconic restaurant in Africa right here in Zanzibar. Guys, so I had to drive all the way to Michambi to have lunch at the Rock restaurant. It's quite a very popular restaurant. Its unique position in and on the water of the Indian Ocean makes it stand out. It's uh, popular because of its location and it's uh, also because when the tides are high people can take a boat so it feels like you're having lunch on your own little island. And that's why many people come here. For that. But a lot of people also come here for pictures because it looks good on uh, on Instagram. Instagram right. So if you take pictures for Instagram this like really good spot. It's expensive to eat here so because I just want to eat something at the Rock restaurant and tick off the item on the bucket list, I'll have the cheapest of whatever on there and tick off the item, all right? So let's go now. Are we here already? That's the shortest boat ride ever in the history of entering boats. The Rock is a charming, exclusive restaurant that in a very short period of time has become one of the icons of this exotic island. So, some things you know, if you're gonna visit here, you probably would have to make a reservation. You can't just walk in here, but it's quite easy. You just go to the website, do it, or you can get the travel guide. I'll show you the steps on how to do it and get yourself a seat right here at the restaurant. I tried to find the cheapest food to eat here, as food here can run into hundreds of dollars for a proper three-course meal. Three dollars. Taste never changes, huh? Let's see what we got here. <laughs> My bill is about $33 for chicken square and Coca-Cola. Not bad. Food is great. Views great. Scenery awesome. Customer service great as well. Uh, overall experience, I love it. So we're gonna come here, come during the sunset. Uh, you get better experience and all of it. So bucket list check. Yes. So what would you say is so special about the restaurant? I mean, was a special vision about three Italian guys from Milano, and they, they discovering the island was more than 15 years ago, and then they found the rock in this beach was nothing. So they make an agreement with the local people, which is a, a 14 family, they are the owner of the rock. So yeah. they make an agreement together to rank the rock. It was 2009, they start to build in the rock, they open in this beautiful place, and then after 13 years, the, the rock becoming really famous. Tanzania is home to some of the world's largest tortoises. And the next item I had on my bucket list is to locate them, learn about the giant creatures, and of course, take a photo with them. After asking around, I was told there's only one place I can spot these giant tortoises. So the, uh, the island is called Prison Island. It was erected in 1893, meant to be used as a prison but uh, it was never used as a prison. So the name before Prison Island, it was called Changu Island. Oh. And Changu is a type of fish. So uh, when the idea of the prison came, then the name changed from Changu Island to Prison Island. And that's why everybody calls it Prison Island now. So inside the main thing nowadays to see are the tortoises. And there is a part behind which was meant to be used as a prison, but it was never used, which is also possible to see. To get here, you need to hire a boat, probably between 30 to 50 US. It took us about 20 minutes to get here from Stone Town. They are the second biggest tortoises in the world after the Galapagos. They're called Aldabra. Originally, they came from the Seychelles. Oh, okay. Before they used to be in Stone Town, their growth rate was very low. They decided to move them here. And uh, now, uh, they are, like most people come here for them. So we actually came at a time where they're actually the mating. So uh, I don't know why they're making funny sounds. <laughs> this thing is, uh, looks like something that cars are made out of. Huh? very tough and strong. They like it when you touch their neck this way. Feels like a snake. The skin of a snake. Dinosaur. Bucket list checked. Yes! Whilst you're here, you can do a mini tour of the prison island as well. So this whole place was going to be converted to a prison, right? 
and now it's used as a tourist attraction so people that would come to the prison island that's why that's where the name comes from prison island to take pictures to see the giant turtles and just to immerse themselves in this experience it's really nice Zanzibar has some of the most luxurious resorts and hotels in East Africa which can cost up to $10,000 per night. An item I had on my bucket list was to visit, tour and stay overnight in one of them. So let's see how this plays out. After doing my research, I found out and beyond resorts, Menemba Island is the most exclusive and extremely expensive resort you can stay in while in Zanzibar. On that island, it's a private island. It's not allowed to go. Why is it not allowed to go there? It's private. It's private. It's private property. No one is allowed to go there. So if someone goes there, what happens? You'll be charged a hundred dollar fine. A hundred dollar fine? Yeah. You have and beyond resorts right there. It's really pri uh, it's really private. The rooms there will start from around what five thousand dollars for a night. Uh, if you trespass, you, you're gonna you're gonna be charged like a hundred dollars. Uh, they require a special appointment to yeah. go there because it's so private. All these boats you see here, they have to pay a marine fee uh, to come to this island and beyond has like uh, a collaboration with the government. It was leased to them by the government for 60 years so they develop it and you know it's really beautiful the water here is crystal clear a lot of people come here my request to visit the island was rejected i felt bad but i decided to visit lomessien premium water villas which is the most exclusive and expensive water villas in and around zanzibar and it's always booked you need to request way ahead to stay here it features a living room an indoor entertainment area a wardrobe a soaked bathtub bathroom a terrace that comes with a hot top swing chair and you know a sit out area of course bucket list checked yes I checked out the Isaraya Overwater Villas, which, you know, is a cheaper option, but still gives you the same experience and a lot more resorts you're going to see in an upcoming episode. If you got the travel guide, you're going to see how you can reserve this place and, you know, get some percentage off. As the day was gradually coming to an end, I made it back to Stone Town to learn about the history of one of the world's heritage sites here in Tanzania and also an item on my bucket list. For a place to be a world heritage site, it must have an outstanding universal value. So there are three main things that made Stone Town a world heritage site. Wow. The first thing is the uh, manifestation of cultural fusion, interaction and interchange that can still be seen in the cultural tradition and civilization of the people that people from different parts of the world were able to come together, live in a single community, not only that, but in peace and harmony. Stone Town architecture has a number of distinctive features. Each and everyone who came here came with their own architectural tradition, integrated to create a unique cosmopolitan architecture. Yeah. And the last thing is the slave trade history. Yeah. So uh, Stone Town of Zanzibar bears a great symbolic in abolishment of slave trade, which had the biggest slave market in East Africa Yo. and the last open slave market in the world. And those are the main things that actually made it qualified to be listed as a World Heritage Site. So basically the town is called Stone Town because of the material used in construction, which are the coral stones like the ones you see here. So all the buildings in the town are made of this material and that's why the town is called the Stone, Stone Town. town. So behind us is the, is the old slave market site. Um, and as you know, Zanzibar has like a very strong slave history trade, of slave trade. Slave yeah. tr slave trade. For so East Africa, it had the biggest slave market in East Africa. Right here? Yeah, so and uh, the last open slave market in the world. And I told you that's uh, one of the reasons that made it a World Heritage Site as well. Oh, right. So inside nowadays, the place where the markets used to be, yeah. they built a church, there is a monument, and uh, there is a slave trade exhibit with information and pictures about how the, uh, the trade was like. And that's basically it to, to see inside here. When the French found their mission here, they bought the place from the Arab traders and started construction of the church. But the architect is the same one who designed the church in Marseille, France, the Notre Dame de la Garde. Mm. So the same one who designed the Notre Dame in Marseille is the same one who designed these churches. As well. The heart of Stone Town mostly consists of maze and narrow alleys lined with houses, shops and mosques. Since most of the streets are too narrow for cars, the town is crowded with bicycles and motorbikes. Why are the roads too small and... So when you look at Stone Town, it's like the town has no plan. It looks like zigzag. Yeah. But uh, they made the tall buildings to enable shade on the streets and the houses close together so that the breeze from the sea when it comes to the town yeah. to circulate for a long time. Yeah. So whenever you're in the small streets, it's cooler than when you're outside the, uh, the small streets. 
I mean, you can feel it as well. Yeah. When you left there, like, it's very hot, but now it's like you're not complaining, right? Right. So this is like the heart of Stone Town. Most of the ways are connected. It's a place where the local gather, having coffee, some games. In the box, there is a TV. When there is uh, football, people come and watch here. So it's also the main point of the opposition party. That's where you see the flag around. All right. So it's quite a popular place around town. And these doors are very famous in Zanzibar as well. Uh, if you're walking around Stone Town, you're going to find doors with... What are these supposed to be? These spikes. Spikes. Before they were sharper, I mean they had sharper spikes. The spikes were mainly used in India as a defense against elephants. In India they had a war where people rode elephants to break the doors. Yeah. And they thought if they had spikes sharper than these, the elephants would not be able to hit the doors. But since Zanzibar has never had elephants, the spikes were just introduced here as a decoration and to symbolize the wealthy of the household. <laughs> So uh, that's why you see many of the doors with spikes and different kind of styles. Stone Town is a very beautiful place to be in with so much to do and see. You can watch the boats and the ocean and also the sunset. If you have some more time on your hands, you can watch how the local guys would jump from the wall into the water with different stunts during the evening or high tide period. It is very amusing. If you're lucky enough, the locals would make a whole show program for you. Friendly Jumbo. Jumbo, Jumbo, Buana. <laughs> Later that evening, I decided to check out the Forani Garden where you can find some of Zanzibar street food and the most popular Zanzibar pizza, which was more delicious than I thought it was. Okay. You're welcome. Zanzibar pizza, we have a sweet pizza, we have savory. And the Zanzibar pizza, basic, we mix the beef, onion, pepper, carrot, cheese, tomato, mayo, and one egg, and avocado. The Zanzibar pizza. Small, but it's very, very yummy, yummy. You're welcome. Okay. It's called Forodani Garden. Forodani for Garden. Forodani. Forodani. And the name Forodani comes from a Swahili word. So Foroda meaning customs. And when you say Forodani, it's like the place of the customs. So this whole garden wasn't there before. So this all used to be covered by water. So, it's like where the port used to be located. Oh, the wow. land was reclaimed back in 1935, 1936. So uh, now they use it as a food market. Every evening they bring souls and they sell food here. So it's not only a place where the tourists come, locals from families come Just here come in the here evening to relax for, as well. for dinner. And also the kids jump into the ocean in the evening, but uh, when, uh, yeah, when the sun sets, yeah. then it's a nice vibe, mainly locals. Zanzibar, pizza, two dollars it is. <laughs> That's new. Go <laughs> It's entering, eh? It's touching all corners of my taste board. So, I ate a lot of things here and I only spent like $10, which is pretty cheap. How much Bucket is list like checked. One, one yes! <laughs> my trip to Zanzibar left me speechless. However, I had so many other items on my bucket list that I couldn't tick off. Some were because of finance, others were access and some other reasons were just timing. But I hope to visit Tanzania in the coming month to see the other part of the country and tick off the remaining item on my Tanzania bucket list. Don't forget to download the Zanzibar travel guide if you plan on visiting this island destination. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.